So we're talking about in Arizona. So a day after Arizona Supreme Court ruled, a 160-year-old near total abortion ban is enforceable. Republicans in the state legislature blocked efforts to repeal the law. Republican leaders in Arizona's legislature, which is controlled by conservatives, said they will be, quote, closely reviewing the high court's ruling and listening to their constituents to determine how to proceed. However, they then scuttled an effort to repeal the law by calling for a recess and adjourning until next week, prompting angry jeers from Democrats. I move that we recess to the sound of the bill immediately. You've heard the secondary motion. Uh, I heard a second. All in favor of that motion, vote aye. aye. All opposed, vote no. Ayes have it, so ordered. So that's, they're, they're just not going to win hard, no. being behind Donald Trump being responsible for a total abortion ban, nearly near a total abortion ban with no, I think, no exceptions for rape or incest. No, just life of the mother. That was went into law before Arizona was a state and before Abraham Lincoln before women had was right reelected. Think about that. Before Abraham Lincoln was reelected, this this total abortion ban came yeah. into effect. And there were 6,500 people living in Arizona when this happened. So think about this ban now. Think about Arizona women. Yeah. All women now don't have access to health care that could save their lives. Anyone who goes to visit Arizona, don't go there. You might have an emergency. If you need an emergency DNC, you need some sort of emergency treatment. Under this law, you won't get it. And you are not yeah. going to be safe. So why would you take a vacation in Arizona? Over, why would you live in Arizona? You're going you know, over on Fox, they were saying, well, you know, getting a, getting a bus ticket's not that bad. Uh, Did they actually say that? Yeah. That's, yeah. They, 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 say, they say, they say, oh, yeah, you get, it's, not a big, it's not a big deal. Buy a bus ticket and that's, go to another state. That's mm -hmm. embarrassing for them. I, I mean, it looks like you're going to have to drive four hours uh, in some places in that state to be able to get health care you need. Um, and we're talking, you know, abortion uh, is health care, and this is going to involve people as well who actually want pregnancies and have medical emergencies. This is going to involve women who are in life or death situations. And now we have hospitals and health care facilities in Arizona who don't even know what they are supposed to do. And so you have doctors hesitating before saving women's going lives. Going to the board, going what, to lawyers. Wondering if, right, wondering if they're going to be prosecuted. And these procedures are not just for women who are pregnant. Exactly. So women are being denied the health care that they are used to that saves their lives, improves their lives, keeps them out of pain, perhaps them, gets them out of a situation where they're bleeding out. They will not get that in Arizona. Right. Thanks to Donald Trump, well, by the way. And it also uh, puts them in a position where they may be able to have babies in the future. I mean, they they, un seen. unfortunately, we're seeing all too often this, and, and Joe Biden's campaign underlined this situation of a lady who may never be able to have a baby again. Yeah, I, that really power. Go, I just wanted to add, you know, pregnancy is actually a very dangerous yes. condition. And so, scary I mean, enough. it's scary enough as it is. And the idea that you would, uh, essentially threaten uh, prosecution of doctors uh, you know, who are trying to actually provide care to human beings in that condition is abominable. And I cannot imagine that this is going to go over well with Arizona voters, and not just women. Men. Yeah, the, Men, too. That, that's the human point. aspect of this is obviously most important, but there's a huge political one, too. I mean, I've talked to people in the Trump campaign. They are, it's, it's, a, it's a panic these last few days about what Arizona did. Trump finally comes out, gives his position on Monday about abortion yeah, and then the very next day this happens in Arizona on the heels of what happened in Florida his home state and this this changes the electoral calculus come November Florida I think most Democrats can see still likely out of reach but they'll make Republicans spend money there but Arizona which seemed like it was maybe slipping away Biden won it in 2020 everyone this consensus in, in Wilmington is it'd be harder this time around they hadn't given up on it but they knew it would be harder but now I think it's squarely in play again with abortion rights being on the ballot and if that is the case that opens up their path to 70 when before it looked like it was 
maybe only going to be able to go through Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. Add Arizona to it, they got lots of options. Donna, done. you're an ad guy. I mean, how hard would it be to put an ad together? Just absolutely well, skew. Biden has already done that. that ad that's out there. Oh, and Arizona. That, woman, that, that almost lost a life is incredibly compelling. Look, going back to the top of the show, we talked about the polls. That was pre-Arizona. Abortion is the issue. You know, Carl always famously said, it's the economy stupid. It's abortion stupid. And I've yeah. said this before. Women are going to save this country. This is on women. And, you know, we can and see all... And the men all, who love them. And the men who love And women, not only their votes, they're going to be talking to their fathers and their husbands and their yeah. sons and go, are you kidding me? Yeah. So thank God for women. And uh, Arizona is going to be a big, big, big deal. And even in his scramble yesterday, Donald Trump's scramble to some, get to some position on abortion, he went on to say that taking away Roe versus Wade, for which he takes full credit, it was an incredible thing, an incredible mm -hmm. achievement, quote, we did that. Yeah. Just take that, yes, put it on did. tape. Help and that was, they so they, he said, well, no, give it back to the states, but what Arizona did is bad. Reporter says, well, what about Florida? Oh, that's bad, too. They should change that. So is he going to have to go state by state? Is he going to get to half the country by the time he stops counting? And say, well, no, those, those are all bad, but we should still give it back to the states. Point being, there's nowhere for him to hide on this. Well, and this is now becoming a trend. And the undecided voters that we looked at yesterday in those focus groups by WIC, they, a lot of the undecided or people who had voted for Trump in the past were saying, we don't know where he stands on anything. He keeps changing. And you just can't believe him. You know, and at least Biden may not like him, but I can believe what he says. That was, by the way, that, that was a crazy focus groups because well, you, you listen to everybody talk candidates. about economics. Yeah. Oh, Biden, horrible. Biden, horrible. Hi, Biden, Biden, horrible. No, the Biden, it's horrible, horrible, horrible. And you sit there thinking, okay, well, this election's over. And they go, what do you think about Donald Trump? And by the end of it, they were talking over <laughs> each other. Like they couldn't talk quickly enough about why they were offended by Donald Trump, but on abortion, and I think these focus groups are always so fascinating. We always learn things in focus groups like we did with, with Heilman and Halpern's on the lady who said, you know, he's one of us. And then in 2020, uh, Elise is with a, the Trumper, a uh, conspiratorial Trumper, mm -hmm. who said, wait, I'm not talking about abortion. That's none of my business. The thing that got me in the ones that you guys played yesterday was, the, the libertarian with with the with you know the headphones on total libertarian he said wait a second now wait wait we're so we're the government can't do anything right his view the government can't do anything right and we're turning our bodies over to them it's like this is the worst thing in the world and so you get to understand why even for some people that may not be married may not have daughters may not have a, a, a personal intimate connection they're sitting there going wait well if they can do that to women they can do that to me and this is really frightening when the federal government comes in and takes control of your body takes control of your health care suddenly you look at what that guy what that libertarian saying and you start to understand why this cuts across all all demographics. See, that's a consistent and rational argument. I don't know if everyone's going to make that, but if you believe that the federal government should be burned down, as Steve Bannon and others in, in the Trump world have said, and get rid of all departments of this and education and that and the IRS and everything else, you can't then have a little carve out for, well, actually, we should have doughy old white men telling women what they right. should do with their bodies, too, from yeah. the United States Senate. It just doesn't work that way. So that he, he makes a good point. You know, Are so more to a point in Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. Guys that, that have come <laughs> off of Delta and they go to the Mississippi and they're deciding to tell, you know, 25 year old uh, uh, women who have two children who are having a, a complicated pregnancy. I know best what what you should do with your yeah. body. I mean, if that doesn't freak the hell out of everybody, then I don't know what does. Well, I thought what was interesting also, those were swing states, um, undecided voters, people who had voted for Trump. And what was really fascinating to me is that Trump's division had broken through. Uh, they may not watch this show. They may watch everybody this watches this or show. Fox, because if they voted for Trump, they probably get their news somewhere else, maybe. 
and still the division had broken through. You heard one voter saying, I got January 6th, I just, you know, if that could happen, what else could happen? He's so divisive, he's so mean. That had broken through as much as the denial and the avoidance might be happening on certain networks where people get their news, so that's number one. So I think when people, as you say, tune in to the election and start looking at their options, they're going to see this and be like, whoa, it's even gotten worse rather than better and then add this abortion situation they're going to be seeing yeah. and hearing enduring the ramifications of what donald trump has done to women's health care across america because in every state but in many states with these bans women are going to be talking to their doctors about the options they don't have anymore yeah. Because of Donald Trump. I, I think I think the biggest challenge, Donnie, is whether you're talking about abortion, the radicalism of that, and the divide, or what Meek is talking about in the focus groups, everybody I'm gonna divide. I think his great challenge is just the sense of exhaustion. Yeah. I was hearing from mm -hmm. Trumpers in twenty twenty saying, Oh, I guess I'll vote for him. I don't know. I'm so exhausted by this guy. Every day, it's a different fight. And these were Trumpers that were saying it. That was before January the 6th. That was before he completely, completely went, went, went way out there. He was already pretty far out there. Look, and we haven't even seen a campaign yet. So it really, if you really think about the last six, eight months, we haven't seen much of him. He's in Mar-a-Lago holding court down there. I want to go back to something Mika was talking about, bringing up January 6th and bringing that together with abortion. Safety is a big word. Mm. If you say to people, do you feel safe? Do you feel safe? Joe Biden, you, can, you know, you can say everything you want about Joe Biden. He's old, he's this, he's not perfect. You kind of, he comes on and there's like a primal safe, like I think I feel safe with this guy. About and I, I think, you know, whether it's a woman and you're worried about your body or whether it's worried about, you know, revolts on the streets, there is a, and I think that our primal number one thing is to feel safe and I think Trump makes people feel unsafe, as, as okay. evidenced by whether it's abortion or January 6th or other areas. Yeah, with Biden, there can be no quick side moves. You're not going to incite, <laughs> no he's side not side inciting side. a riot. No, yeah, okay. exactly. You're not going to sneak up on Asking okay. people to come <laughs> armed and head to the Capitol. Yeah. Hey, everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.